This is the Ari One Thinker X400 High Speed 3D Printer. It is the biggest, the heaviest 3D printer I have ever owned. Let's check it out. We'll cover three things, the ins and outs of this printer, what I've printed so far, and then we'll see if I, at 600 pounds, <laughs> wait, what am I trying to say? We'll see if I, at six feet and 200 pounds, can fit inside the printer and close the doors. The Thinker X400 features a beautiful, fully enclosed acrylic transparent housing, which maintains stable temperatures, making it ideal for materials like ABS, nylon, and carbon fiber filaments. You've got two glass doors and a five inch HD touchscreen that's intuitive, easy to use, and very responsive. On the right, you'll find all the electronics. There's a power button and an emergency stop switch with two USB ports, one on the front and one on the back, along with a network port. Going around back, you'll see the power cord and another power switch. And on the left, you'll find the heavy duty spool holder. The Thinker X400 is so big that I fit a 3D printed printer inside of a printer, inside of a printer, inside of this one. It isn't just big, it's fast, with a high speed of 500 millimeters per second. The acceleration tops out at 10,000 millimeters per second, and the build volume is 400 millimeters cubed, which makes this one of the largest enclosed 3D printers that exist out of box. Speaking of out of box, when I was talking to everyone about video ideas, I mentioned how I could do an unboxing video. They were like, uh, that's gonna be the shortest video you've ever seen. And they were right. All you have to do is remove the outer package, four screws, and add the spool holder with the tube. Then it's ready to go. This was the fastest unboxing and prep I've ever experienced, and I've unboxed 20 different printers. That being said, it is an extremely heavy printer and will require at least two people if you have to go up or down stairs. Yeah. Oh gosh. I believe this printer is about 150 pounds, and in kilograms, that is. 150 pounds is how many kilograms? 68. It does come with casters that work very well on hard surfaces, but not as well on carpet. Those casters convert to rubber feet that can be lowered by turning the red knob. We'll talk about more details in a minute, but I wanted to show you some of the things I've printed. I started off with the iconic Benchy. Everyone prints these. I don't know why. I'm just gonna keep printing them. It's a good baseline. Benchy, benchmark. It printed this in 19 minutes. The fastest I've printed a Benchy with another printer was eight minutes, so this wasn't the fastest. But that's still really fast and the quality looks so good, especially for such a large printer. I then decided to go big and printed this Iron Man head. Holy cow, it came out perfect. The crazy thing is I did zero infill and only two walls. There's no layer line shifts or Z banding. The Airy One Thinker X400 comes with everything you would expect with a 3D printer today. A direct drive extruder, automatic bed leveling, a filament detector, a built-in camera, controllable lights, a magnetic, flexible, double-sided PEI plate, and clipper software. With bed leveling, it starts off with calibrating each Z axis, then measures 25 points, giving you a very level bed so you can print edge to edge without issues. It'll perform bed leveling before each print, which takes about 15 minutes every time. I'm hoping they will eventually speed that up. The available nozzle sizes are 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one millimeter. Since this is a pre-release Kickstarter printer, it just came with one nozzle. That nozzle is hardened still with a maximum temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, and the platform goes up to 110 Celsius, which means this thing supports everything from PLA to glass, carbon, nylon, all those different types of reinforced filaments. That includes PETG, ABS, PLA. You know what, just throw them all on the screen.
Not only is this printer fully enclosed, but it comes with a high efficiency activated carbon air filter, which is located inside on the back wall. The noise from that fan and from the machine when running ranges between 50 and 60 dB, meaning it's quiet enough for office or classroom environments. In fact, I have it sitting right behind me and nobody hears it on calls. If you've never dealt with a printer this size before, here's the size of a Bamboo Lab mini plate. And here is, not that one, this is another size that's a, I think this is 300 millimeters at the biggest. And here is the build plate for the Airy One Thinker X400. I'm not sure if you'll receive this exact bed, but this one comes with a sticker on the back that gives this carbon fiber design when you print on it. It's pretty crazy. And I'll show you some examples of that. Now I've been working on a project for the past two months. The reason why it's taken so long is I didn't have a printer big enough for some of the main pieces. I can't tell you what the project is. We will have a video in the next month or two, so make sure to check back. If it weren't for this printer, we wouldn't have been able to finish this project. Here are a few of the parts. And I have to tell you, these printed so good. They are perfect for what we need them for. And just for fun, I printed it in black with that design. And I mean, this looks amazing. Like I said, I'll be releasing the video in the next month or two, so please check back, or you could subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can see that video project. It is the coolest thing I've ever designed so far. Let's talk about the display. It has a ton of settings. I won't go through all of them, but you can pause the video to get more details. Here's something that was unique about this printer. When you load filament, it will detect the filament and automatically heat up the nozzle and prepare for the next print by priming the nozzle with that filament. That's pretty cool. Another unique feature is the ability to cancel certain objects on a print bed during the print. Now, why would you need that? Well, if you've ever printed more than one part at once, odds are you've had one of those prints fall off the bed or maybe they're starting to warp or something happens and you're left with two options. You can either cross your fingers, let it continue to print and hope that it doesn't mess up the rest of the print, or you have to cancel it, go back to the drawing board, figure out why that print failed and redo the whole thing over again. With this printer, you don't have to do that. You can just select the print you want to cancel and let it continue to go. I'm going to test this by printing 90 tiny dragons. Each dragon has three surfaces touching the plate. That means 270 small parts will be on the bed. I'm not using a raft or a brim, so there will definitely be some failures. This print will take 26 hours. Let's see how it does. Well, so far nothing has failed yet. Still waiting. Ugh. Why is this printer so good? I think it's time for bed. Let's see how this looks in the morning. Well, the print is finished and I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is it actually looks really good, but the bad news is it looks really good. None of the prints failed, so I didn't have a chance to use that feature. But take a look at these. Even though that test failed, it was actually a good thing. And luckily, Uncle Jesse has this same printer and he was able to test that object cancellation and it worked out perfectly. This next print is the biggest, heaviest, most complex print I've ever done. And it is crazy. Everyone sent me this file, I clicked print, and two days later, this showed up. Where is it? Oh, right. Ugh. 
right here. This thing, it's massive. Here's what makes it so crazy. First off, there are no supports. This thing is printing overhangs and overhangs and retraction and all these different movements. And the bottom and the top don't look any different as far as quality. Even when I ran out of filament and had to use a second spool, yes, this takes more than one spool, there's no line shifting or anything that indicates this color changed, which means I can paint this and you would never know that it had multiple filament spools. I was a little worried that this thing wouldn't hold my weight, but I mean, it's like, I, I don't, oh, maybe I could break if I squeeze hard enough, but when I sit on this, it's sturdy and uncomfortable as heck. Seriously though, this is not a comfy seat. I would probably use this as more of a decoration, maybe put it as a coffee table or an end table. I mean, it looks cool. It kind of looks like it's from another planet, but I would say I really like it and it's huge. Just for comparison, here's the smallest printer I own and here's this thing. It is so big, it can be a stand for this printer. I mean, maybe that's what I'll use it for, I don't know. And when it comes to height, I can switch chairs and you can't really tell the difference. In fact, I think it's just looking at my head height. <laughs> yeah, it's the same height. So you could use it as a chair, but I mean, that's what you're sitting on. It feels like you're sitting on bones. <laughs> I'm excited that it finished. It took two days to print. We had some crazy storms. I was worried we might have a power outage. So fingers crossed it worked and it did. This printer is part of a Kickstarter, which means I received it pre-release and it came with some bugs and some issues. This isn't meant to be a review video, it's more of a presentation to help people be aware of this exciting printer that's coming out. That being said, I do have some feedback. But before we get into it, let's see if I, again, six feet, 200 pounds, and 200 pounds is how many kilograms? 90 kilograms. Let's see if I can fit in this printer. Now, if I do fit, make sure to subscribe. This won't be the craziest thing you see on this channel. All right, I'm uh, attempting to climb into a very small space and I am claustrophobic, so. No. All right, come on. Oh gosh, come on. Yeah. <gasps> Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. Talk, talk, talk. Please subscribe. Time for some feedback. I would love the option to skip bed leveling completely once it's calibrated for the first time. It takes 16 minutes between measuring the four corners of the Z axis and doing the whole bed leveling. It would be nice if we could skip that every once in a while. And honestly, I think that we could speed it up a bit. I mean, it's a large bed, so you can only go so fast, but I think that they could program it to move a little faster. Although this Benchy took 19 minutes to print, it took another 16 minutes before that just to get it ready. So all in all, we're looking at 30 plus minutes. The USB slot used for printing is on the back side of the printer, meaning you have to reach behind and try to figure out where that slot is located. And if your USB drive is situated the right way, I would suggest they move that to the front and I don't think that would be very hard. The glass doors are nice, but they don't always stay shut. I don't think it'd be difficult to add a couple magnets at the top just to keep them closed. Now this next one is purely cosmetic and just an opinion of mine. I would love for them to take the fan that's on the front and just twist it to the side to open up that nozzle. It'd be easier to reach in and grab to switch them out. And it's also nice to just see your print without having to get real low at the bed level <laughs> to look underneath those fans to see if it's getting that first clean layer. That being said, every time I started this print, I walked away didn't even think about it because it prints so well every time. First layer just works out great. I did have one fail and I'm super bummed about this. I was trying to print this Iron Man bus so the head of Iron Man could go on top of it and I tried taking shortcuts and it messed things up. My first mistake was making the walls at 0.2 millimeters. I also turned the infill down and did lightning infill so it was pretty much an empty container. And because the walls were so thin, the wall started to crack below which lifted them up and caused the print head to bump into the top here. I eventually just canceled the print because it wasn't gonna work out. But before I canceled it, it looked so good. This bottom portion just looks amazing. 
Because I tried to save time and money by not using more filament, I now have to spend more time and more money buying another one of these filaments so I can print this. And since I didn't do it in time for this video, you'll have to check back and see if my next video has this Iron Man bust in the back. The other problem with this print was on the bed side. I didn't have it completely flat, so it only attached to the bed on this portion. This was all my fault, nothing to do with the printer. Oh, that kind of hurts. I have been so impressed with this printer. It'd be perfect for print farms, classrooms, or even in your house. Just remember, it is really heavy. If you need to go upstairs or downstairs, maybe ask a friend or two to come and help you lift it. Huge thank you to everyone for sending us this printer and sponsoring this video. We've been using your filament for six or seven years and we've loved it. We now have one of the biggest fully enclosed 3D printers. For all of our YouTube and Patreon members, thank you so much for your support. We really couldn't do this without you. That should make the coolest thumbnail. There you go.